Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the challenges in Lagos. This is part of Paper 2, Unit A, Urban Issues and Challenges. Population growth in Lagos in recent decades has been rapid, as better healthcare and life expectancy leads to natural increase and rural to urban migration occurs as millions leave the countryside in pursuit of a better quality of life. But this has had an enormous impact on Lagos and has brought with it a number of key challenges. The first one of these is congestion. Lagos is the commercial capital of Nigeria and is notorious for traffic congestion. The rise of the middle classes means that more and more people can afford to have a car. And historically, a lack of inner city rail system means that most people drive into the CBD. Around 2 million cars drive into Lagos each day, overwhelming the road network. This leads to congestion with many business hours lost from workers arriving late to work or with delays in deliveries. People spend around three hours in their cars on average per day. This congestion also causes high levels of air pollution leading to respiratory illnesses. And pollution from exhaust fumes in Lagos is five times higher than the internationally recommended limit. The city's traffic management agency employs 2,000 traffic officers to try and manage this situation and has installed traffic signals in busy areas and introduced radio traffic updates to help people navigate their journeys. They've also set up a hotline so members of the public can call in to report problems on the roads. It is hoped that congestion will be eased by the city's ambitious integrated transport plan. This is known as the Lagos Strategic Transport Master Plan. It includes an efficient network of linked roads, railways and waterways, which will make journeys much quicker and easier. The plan should reduce daily traffic jams by increasing the number of residents using public transport and reduce vehicle emissions, improving the city's air quality. There are several aspects to this plan. Firstly, there is a rapid bus transit system. This is on a north-south route through the city between the suburbs and the CBD, with separate bus lanes to speed up journeys. It is currently used by 200,000 people every day, but it has to be supplemented by a fleet of Danfos, which are pictured on the screen next to the train. These are minibus taxis and they're designed to carry 15 passengers, although sometimes they end up carrying 30. The eventual aim is to have 14 of these bus rapid transit routes. Secondly, there is the Lagos Rail Mass Transit. The Blue Line Light Railway opened its first phase in December 2022, running west to east across the city, transporting around a quarter of a million passengers a day. When this line is fully completed, it will carry half a million people daily. It is a long-awaited major transport link for the city, connecting Lagos Island, where the CBD is, to the residential areas in the west. The eventual aim of the Lagos Rail Mass Transit system is to open up six rail lines which will connect the city, as well as a planned monorail. Thirdly is the waterway network. This will have 20 water transport routes, including the Lag Ferry, which is a state-operated ferry carrying over half a million people per year on its six routes across the river. The increased number of ferries will enable people to travel efficiently around Lagos using the various waterways. There are other planned improvements, including a better road network with the removal of markets and street vendors from the road, meaning that people can travel more quickly and traffic congestion will be reduced, which will also be aided by more dedicated bus lanes. There is also the proposed Lecky International Airport, which will be away from the city centre and is designed to handle 5 million passengers annually. Let's move on to think about water supply in Lagos. Despite being a city with a huge economy, only 10% of people in Lagos have a pipe water supply from the Lagos Water Corporation, which has been treated and purified. This is because rapid population growth has led to an increased demand on water supplies, which will only get worse in the future. The rest of the population get their water from expensive water vendors, where they end up paying 500% more than the Lagos Water Corporation charges for water. These are often the poorest inhabitants of the city as well. As a result, water theft has become a huge problem in Lagos. Other people dig their own wells or sink boreholes to reach groundwater supplies, and there are a small proportion of city dwellers who even resort to drinking from the river or the Lagos Lagoon, which are highly polluted and very salty. 
Poor planning and insufficient funding along with an old failing infrastructure means that the government finds it difficult to provide sanitation and clean water to the inhabitants of Lagos. They currently provide 330 million gallons a day less than what is needed. Unfortunately, water pollution is also a huge issue. The Lagos water supply lacks adequate wastewater treatment and is heavily polluted with bacteria and chemicals, leading to a high incidence of cholera and dysentery. A lack of waste collection also means that a lot of rubbish, including plastics, end up in the city waterways, like you can see on the screen. Sewage disposal is a massive issue. It is sometimes disposed of with rainwater through open drains and then carried into rivers and the lagoon, which also becomes polluted. Sewage may also seep into the ground from pit latrines or leaking septic tanks, and here it can find its way into the water supply through wells and boreholes. Additionally, some water pipes are laid with sewage, so they become contaminated. Even water from vendors can be contaminated because they obtain water from the same sources. Let's move on to think about the issue of waste and in particular the Olososan rubbish dump. 10,000 tonnes of waste is produced in Lagos every day. 40% of this gets taken to landfill sites while the other remains in the street or ends up in waterways. Olisosan is pictured on the screen and is a huge landfill site near the centre of Lagos which receives waste collected from the city. The dump is so extensive that some people even live there having built their homes out of discarded materials and the site has shops, restaurants, bars, cinemas and even a mosque. 500 people work at the dump sorting through rubbish to find stuff to recycle and sell. This waste is sorted by hand, but often workers don't wear gloves or shoes, so are at risk from infection from sharp objects. The dump also receives electrical waste imported from other countries. This e-waste is treated with chemicals to extract reusable materials, but toxic fumes are released in the process. These fumes are breathed in by workers who often end up with respiratory diseases. Methane builds up under the decomposing waste, which can lead to fires. However, this gas can be harnessed to turn into energy. Lagos State Waste Management Authority currently has plans to produce 25 megawatts of electricity from landfill, which would be enough to power a town, although obviously not a city the size of Lagos. So we're going to end the video by talking about rising sea levels. Sea level rise is a threat to Lagos as most of the city lies less than two metres above the sea level. This could lead to an increase in flooding, which could lead to the groundwater becoming contaminated by salt. In the last couple of decades, Lagos has experienced several serious incidents of flooding, turning roads into rivers and overwhelming drainage systems, causing sewage to flood homes. Lagos is also situated within the tropics and has over 2,000 millimetres of rainfall annually, and its flat, low-lying land by the coast is very quick to flood, but very slow to drain, so the flood waters stay in place for a significant period of time. The flood risk has been made worse by rapid urbanisation, which has covered the land with impermeable tarmac and concrete, and as these surfaces cannot absorb water, surface runoff increases. Rapid urbanisation has also led to informal settlements being built without proper drainage and land reclamation for development sites which has reduced the area of water for flood water to drain back into. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on the challenges in Lagos. Thank you for watching.